The design concept is an important step in the design process for scenic designers. After we've gotten the research done, we've gotten initial reactions from the director from that research, we're ready to start presenting an approach to the show that will help the director understand which way we're going and to finalize that concept and approach before we actually start doing all the artwork that's required in scenic design. So the steps that get us to the design concept are reading the script initially, getting the feel of what the playwright's trying to do, having that initial meeting with the director for his or her conceptual approach so we know what the director would like to do, then completing a script breakdown and a scene listing, gathering and presenting initial research, and then we're ready to actually give the design concept. As we make the design concept, there are some things we need to keep in mind. We should use verbiage from the director's original concept as much as possible, so it ties back into what the director has already told us. We should be as visual as possible. We as scenic designers are visual artists for the director. Therefore, we should represent visually as much as possible what the director has been trying to tell us. Part of the reason of doing this visually is because we have um, defined it more precisely. We should offer research support and choices. Part of the reason we gave all that research was so that the director was part of the process of making those final choices. You'll note that up to this point, we haven't been doing any of our own visual. We haven't been painting or drawing or sketching. We're using other images from things that are already created. This way, we're not defensive of the art which we've presented, and we are specifically looking for what the director likes and does not like. We should use this time to confirm the style of the production. That should be definitely in our concept, so the director knows if we're approaching it realistically or in some stylized way, such as impressionistic or expressionistic. We should address the audience relationship, where we want to place the audience within the scenic design, how the auditorium relates to the stage in our particular production. We should outline the challenges. It's a good idea to give the team, especially the director, an idea of some of the specific inherent challenges with the way we're approaching the production, such as a production that has multiple scene changes or a production that has a low budget. Just a reminder that we have these challenges we need to meet when we approach the actual scenic design. We should then offer solutions to each of those challenges. Some can be done visually, some might just be listed for them with some options so they can be part of the decision making in how we approach challenges. We then need to clarify certain things. Time period. All of us in the design team need to be specific about what time period we're doing the show or range or lack of time period. That just needs to be established. Specific stage mechanics. We need to know if the director wants to use a curtain. We should specify that we plan on using a revolve, or a jackknife, or rolling platforms, or fly lines bringing things in and out, because each of these affects the overall approach to the show and how it addresses the original director's concept. We need to bring up some construction approaches. Often at these meetings, the scene shop will be represented by the technical director who might be attending these meetings. So if we're specific about construction approaches up front, we can get a good reaction from the technical director and perhaps see problems way ahead of time that may save us lots of time later on. Then we should end with some representation of the design in some fashion that gives them an overall feeling of what we've talked about and what we're going to do for the approach. Here is an example of a scenic concept presented for Pride and Prejudice. Some of the things we had discussed, the difference between Pride and Vanity, which was the original single-line concept presented by the director. 
we talked about families seen first in their portrait, their photo albums, as part of the concept. This was actually written right into the script. We then discussed the feeling of curtains, but shears, looking through things. The director specifically mentioned that the show was very cinematic, moving from scene to scene, without blackouts or other complicated scene change techniques. We also talked about being minimalistic, with just furniture to help make placement of where we were. And then the director had specifically talked about pastels, particularly in blues and greens and beiges. So I started using some of that terminology in some of the sections as we talked through pride versus vanity, finding some images that I thought represented the period fairly well and fairly quickly. And portraits. Photo albums. Curtains, shears. Cinematic, moving, layered. Minimalistic, selected, detail. Pastels, beiges. And you'll notice particularly in this one that as I said pastels, I particularly picked only one of the three colors, planning to leave the blues and the greens for the costumes to use. I felt it was more important that the set was a more neutral color, beiges. Next, I presented the challenges calling them logistics, or some of the realities of the script. We had 64 scene changes in this production, 11 frames, so those portrait album ideas of presenting characters were done 11 times in the script, so we needed to figure out how we were going to present each of these images within a frame. Continuing overlaps making sure that each of the scenes overlaps into the next scene, and that some of the changing is happening behind the previous scene and behind the upcoming scene. So we get a full cinematic flow to the show, picking out moments in which we might actually want to cut for just a moment for the audience to think. Breaking time and space. You'll notice that a lot of these are quotes right out of the script and or right from the director's concept. The script asked us to break time and space, and I reminded in the logistics that we're supposed to jump time right within a scene. Then I ended with one last quote from the script. As the house puts itself together around them, night passes into day, and it is the next morning. I felt this quote from the script encapsulated a lot of these logistics for us. With that in mind, I presented the floor plan for the Pardo stage on which this show was going to be presented. I then suggested some stage mechanics of using a jackknife, partial circular shape, to stay with the feminine shape of a circle, and that it could rotate off and take furniture pieces with it, pick up new ones, and bring them back on. Then I suggested to help with the logistics of flowing cinematic scenes that overlap, that we had a second jackknife that also revolved and brought furniture pieces in and out, so that one scene could take place on one of these levels while the other one was out picking up pieces for the next. Then I suggested we needed platforms above, where people could go upstairs and take steps up into the rest of the environment of the play, up onto the top platform where the highest of society would be represented, and then of course we would need escapes down the back so actors can get on and off. Masking would be needed, of course, and sheer curtains that were layered on this set coming in and out to help layer and offer images behind and beyond. I ended by showing some of the ideas of what the interiors of this period looked like, pointing out the fact that furniture was piled upon itself, that servants were able to walk around people in their furniture to serve them from any side they needed. This allowed us to understand that as I approached this scenically, we would need to have furniture pieces fairly tight on these platforms. 
I actually threw in one last image for effect to give the idea of what it might be like to be at home with some of these people as they're having their conversations, sewing, reading, doing all the things that they do. Then I presented an image of a quiet spot with full color and suggested, as I had at the beginning, that we would then fade out. We would add sheer curtains that would mask some of what's going on. Not necessarily block an entire scene, but maybe moments in some scenes. Then into that world, we could introduce some of the characters, pulling in some costume details I found, and then another male who might be standing behind a curtain because he's in one of those frames. So I've represented the world, talking them through why I made the decisions for this visual presentation, so they have an understanding of what the show might look like in its context of the scenic design concept. A second design concept that was presented is for Princess Academy. These are some of the terms that the director talked about in her first concept about living in the mountains, and I had images to go with that, what the Norwegian or Scandinavian mountains look like. Linder rock, which is a type of stone used in the script, presented an idea of what mountains made out of stone look like, particularly these rough hewn kind of rocks, representation of what cut stone might look like, and buildings that might be made out of the type of stone we're discussing. I pointed out that some stone has a very rough texture, like this one, or like this. Miri flowers are discussed also in the show, supposedly flowers that grow back through the stone in the mountainsides. So here's representation of a type of flower that could be considered a Miri flower and Mount Eskel, which is supposedly the town at the base of the mountains in which the story takes place. Again, represented by some images from the internet. And the show talks about goats, because there are supposed to be lots of goats in this village. And the director had set this in fairy tale times, kind of a timelessness that she wanted. So I brought in some images that represent fairy tale kind of worlds and pointed out the hand hewn textures of the fairy tale world. Seasons are represented. We see all four seasons in the show. So here were just images capturing some of the colors and textures of those seasons. Then I reminded that one of our challenges is low budget. Uh, that we want the show to be very theatrical instead of realistic. And I reminded them again of low budget, that we are in multiple locations, and reminded them again, don't forget, low budgets. And then I said, and did I forget to mention low budgets? Because one of the major challenges we have for this production was the limited budget. So for mountains, I showed pictures from other shows that have used levels to represent climbing up to different areas. Or multiple locations represented also with platforming that could be used for any location needed. Mount Eskel itself could be represented very simply by a chair or a simple piece of furniture. And Linder Rock. I mentioned again the texture of the stone and pointed out the fact that it in many ways looks like wood and so does the slab in this mountainside represents kind of the same kind of vertical feeling of slab fences that we could use um, lumber in um, slabs uh, remove parts of those so that um, lights could be placed underneath the pieces because parts of the show have the mountain coming to life and representing an energy in the show. And then if we cut those uh, vertical members off, we'll get the actual silhouette of the mountains. Again, 
represented that wood is a good choice because it is that hewn kind of handmade texture of fairy tale worlds. Seasons could be represented by laying cloth out to represent snow very quickly or different colors of cloth for different seasons. So that was the presentation to kind of spur the idea for the um, actual design for Princess Academy. And then I actually clicked over to a SketchUp quick model for the set, representing a perhaps combination of using platforms and using uh, the slats representing the mountains so that the director had an idea of how we could see people within a house over on this side of the stage and then a school set up with a bunch of stools in a row over here climbing up to the top of the mountains and in part of the show people have to go down to the quarry back behind so we can't see that and that could be represented here by going up and over and down behind the mountain. So this gave the team an idea of how I might actually approach the show scenically. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of design concepts, the things you want to think about, and how you might make your own presentations. Obviously, PowerPoint is a very good software program that helps you in that presentation, but they could also be done as cutout images on boards or presented and passed around the table.